Church is not going to fulfill all the things that we need and desire within our faith walk. Church is supposed to supplement our daily communion with God. So today, I'm not going to keep you too long. I just want to talk a little bit about my journey back to church. So I gave a poll and gave you guys options on what the next faith-based video would be. And it was very close between Bible resources and journey back to church. So I just want to let you guys know, for those of you who chose the Bible resources, I will be doing that video. I will be doing that because that's actually the one I wanted to win. But, <laughs> but at the end of the day, like I know for me... And this random lock is just bothering me. I know for me, like talking about this subject that I'm going to talk about today is very sensitive. So if I'm a little bit nervous, please be patient with me. And I'm going to talk about this in a way as not to tear down the church. That is not my goal here. My goal is for the Lord to witness something, at least one thing that I say in your heart for you to take it back to him. Because it is important that we be a part of a local body of believers. And I know a lot of people hear that and it sounds cliche, but I'm telling you, it is important for more than one reason that we be a part of a local body of believers. And I'm saying that as a person who didn't used to believe that. I used to think that, hey, if I have a personal relationship with God, if I'm in my word, my word, every day, reading the Bible, worshiping, having my spiritual encounters, you know, having accountability. If I'm doing it every day, why do I need to be a part of a church? Like, I'm good. And the first two and a half years of my fully surrendered faith walk, I was not a member of a church. Now, my husband and I did attempt to go to a church. It was a very poor experience. And then it wasn't until over a year later that we finally found our now church community. And we are, by the hand of God, good. And we are just settled in. And we're learning and, and getting to know new people. But it took a while. It was an uphill battle getting to this point. So that being said, like, I know it's a very unique journey to get from having pain and hurt and church hurt to getting to a point where you feel comfortable with getting back into church fellowship. I'm not going to take anything away from that. And I don't want this video to be another one of those videos like you need to get in church. Why aren't you in church? Like that's not that's not what this video is about. I want you to know that I empathize with you. I know that church hurt is a very painful experience because we're humans and we have feelings. There's so many different examples of church hurt and you just can't get over that. Okay. And in order to even get to the point where you are okay to be in fellowship again, it literally takes the power of the Holy Spirit and it takes a right heart posture to want to do right by God to be in fellowship. Cause it's hard to deal with people. I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be honest with you. And I'm also saying that as a former therapist, it is hard to deal with people. So when you have dealt with so much pain, in general, even out in the world, but also when you've come into the house of God thinking that you're getting refuge and you're you're seeking knowledge and mentorship and community and you experience a painful encounter, I know that it's painful, okay? I just want to validate you and I want to acknowledge that. And I also want to let you know that at the end of the day, God wants you to be a part of fellowship, not just so that you can get fed, but so that he can use you to be a blessing to that local body. All right. So I just want to give a little bit of insight into my journey, my church journey, I guess. I talked a little bit about this in my first testimony video. We were in and out of church a lot. I, I will consider myself for the majority of my life to be a cultural Christian, meaning like I knew it was good to go to church, but I didn't really understand like the gospel for real. I didn't have a lot of like spiritual, deep spiritual understanding. I just knew that, hey, go to church, see people falling out, see people singing, go back home, do it over again the next week. That's really what my understanding was. And our late mother took us in and out of church for the entirety of our childhood. And when I went to college, I really wasn't thinking about church. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Like I 
wasn't thinking about church until I was approached by a lady who was evangelizing on my college campus. I think it was midway through first semester of my freshman year. I did not know who this lady was. I just know that she was she was nice. And I guess they made a practice of coming on the college campus a lot, evangelizing. And there was this prickling of my heart. So Holy Spirit was on me about getting back into a local church. But I just won't think about that. I was out there trying to club. I was trying to do what I wanted to do, okay? I was trying to get to know the area that I did have an encounter with God as a teenager around 12 or 13 years old. So yeah, I accepted Christ at 12, 13 years old. So Holy Spirit was already in me. But because I wasn't living my life like I was supposed to, his voice was quenched. So I didn't really allow his power to work through me to really do the things that he wanted me to do. But I could still hear his voice. So whenever I did do things I knew I wasn't supposed to be doing, I would be somewhat convicted. So when this lady approached me and talked about church, I was like, okay, whatever. Like, I'll, 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 I'll go. I'll go. So I went. And when I went, it was like this family church. I was like, this is kind of weird. Like literally a family church like this lady her son-in-law and this lady's daughter they had a few children and maybe like 10 more people were in the church and that was it including me okay and i didn't know what was going on but i knew i was supposed to be a part of a church so i just went with it and i know some people might be like was she in a cult <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't believe it was a cult. I didn't. And I, I don't believe that. God has not revealed that to me. But I do believe that I wasn't supposed to be there. It wasn't the right fit for me. I was there for a little over a year. Something happened. I'm not even going to get into that. And I just fell right back into the world. I backslid. I was so mad that I was just like, I don't want to deal with the church anymore. And at that point, I thought I was good. And it wasn't until life hit me that I realized, hey, I'm hurting and nothing that I'm doing is really helping me right now. Went to all of these man-made solutions, different things, coping mechanisms, but I still feel a void. This was around the loss of my mom. Um, I went through hard stuff in my career. All of these things happened and then I just started praying. I started a business in 2020 and I was going through a lot with the startup of that business. I opened my Bible. And I just, I just started praying. And still at this time, I did not understand the gospel. I had not read through the gospels. I just knew that the Bible was what I was supposed to be engaging in to help me with the stress of the startup of my business. I was still dibbling, dabbling in certain things. And I had an encounter with God and my life changed, okay? When I had the encounter with the Lord, I started being in my word every single day, some days two hours per day, praying, worshiping, hard worship. And that started my understanding of Christ and my understanding of the Trinity, my understanding of who God is, my vertical relationship with God. And as I got deeper in that vertical relationship, God began to minister to me about the importance of the love that I was feeling, the importance of showing that to people. And he started to give me different insights on the different ways that he could do that through me. And one of those ways was going to church. And I was like, God, I, I feel like, I mean, I don't really know why I need to. Like, we we cool. We over here. We having a good time. We kicking it. Like, why do I need to go? Like, I don't understand. And I talked to my husband about it because by this time he had fully surrendered his life too. This was in 2020 and or 2021 and he felt the unction too but we would look for local churches but really there was nothing was hitting for anything in the area and it's so wild because the church that we found we did not see that church at any point when we were looking for churches and all of a sudden we found the church online and when we found the church and we listened to dr akabini for the first time when God purposefully guides and prevents us from what we intend, don't throw a tantrum. Don't have a pity party. Don't quit. Don't pout. Don't walk away from the church. Don't walk away from ministry. Don't stop praying. Don't stop reading your word. Don't disconnect from Christian community. Can I tell you why? Because when God says no to one purpose, it's because he has a great 
made a purpose Woo, on your life. When God said no to one thing, even though you perceived it to be a good thing, it's because God had a greater thing in store for your future. Thank you, Jesus, for redirecting me into the greater that you have for my life. It's almost like we found where we were supposed to be at. I'll just say that. And we listened to him online a couple of times. We just felt like that's where we were supposed to be at. So we went there and we began to listen to him and we really saw how God was using him. And we learned more about the church through the website and stuff like that. And when I learned that he was a mental health advocate, that stuck out to me. So when I saw that this ministry had advocacy for mental health and life groups and, and ministry groups for mental health as a mental health professional as a former therapist that witness to me this is not a prescriptive video but at the end of the day i just hope that you take this video take it to god and ask god like how do you want me to show love to people i know that it's important for us to be in church, but I'm not ready for that right now. How can I show love to people? How can I be on the journey to finding a local fellowship? And give me a step-by-step -step of what that looks like for me in my life. Also, pray for the things that you need out of a fellowship. And pray and ask God how he wants to use you in fellowship. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about you getting fed and you getting something out of going to church. It's about God using you. Also be wary that because you are navigating people hurt through church, church hurt, that jumping into service right away might not be the healthiest thing for you. God wants you to love people. He wants you to do that through communion with other saints, i.e. in the church, first and foremost. You can do that through other avenues, but the church is very important to God. Uh, church is not going to fulfill all the things that we need and desire within our faith walk. Church is supposed to supplement our daily communion with God. Mm -hmm.